Welcome back, my name is Tom and this is my Porsche 911 restoration project. I am so close to having finished all the metal fabrication on the strip shell. Garage time. My 911 project is far from stock. All these custom modifications like the camber boxes, the roll bar, the coilover strut braces, and these tie-ins to the coilovers, all this detail takes more time. But I hope to be finished with the seat pan area today and also tackle the passenger side seat mounts. This is the section of seat pan that I cut out last week. You can see I did um, remove one of these brackets and this is for the wiring loom. And this is I think for one of the hangers on the cables or something like that. So I will have to put these back in. Let me show you under the car and uh, show you what the plan is. Okay, from down here you can really kind of see the before and after. So these are the trailing arms in aluminum. One there, one here. Okay, the issue is there are a three holes here to adjust the position of the inner pivot and right now it's in the middle hole this is the stock factory hole if i go to this hole the trailing arm will contact the seat pan and you can see how it, the distance gets bigger as you go down but also the wheel is here and the wheel travel is higher here than it is here so at any time you don't want the trailing arm to contact the car so on this side you can see the white template has been completely clearanced where the trailing arm goes so there's no way the trailing arm can contact the car because it's clearance much higher than it needs to be i'm just using kind of my dirty thumbs to mark this template here i'm gonna have to add a little bit here this side i'm gonna have to be a little bit more creative too about this wire loom shouldn't be a big problem it's flexible wire but i need to get it moved This is roughly the uh, shape I need to make out of metal. So there are going to be a lot of fine tuning and trimming under the car, but I just want to get it close in metal. This stuff measures uh, 20 gauge. And so I got some, some metal here from my, my scrap pile. Same thickness, 20 gauge. <laughs> You'll always see me with the tin snips, I always cut it oversized because so much of the metal gets twisted. So I always keep this section flat and then I waste this metal here. This metal is super cheap, so I'm not worried about wasting it. I just want to have smooth metal when I get to the finished part. This piece here remained really flat. There are some little ripples right where the, the snips sort of start and stop. So I usually just come back with a dolly and hammer just to flatten those out a bit. Okay, now I just wanna transfer the bend location. So I'm just going to poke through the template in two places and draw a line. The nice thing about this design is it's just one bend and the rest gets welded. So trying to keep it simple without a lot of sheet metal. And then I want to double check that the bend is going this way. So when I put it in the brake, I'm looking at this line, it's going to bend it this way. So this is the right side to mark the part. I've made that mistake before.
Yeah, I believe I mentioned last week that this was overlapping, which it was. And that little hammer and dolly work on this particular weld right here doesn't look like it would do much, but it absolutely uh, stretched this to where this is no longer overlapping. And now I can continue welding around the edge. This is a little bit uh, offset, but as I go, this just will get better and better. This is going to be a little tricky to try to hold the camera and pull this in, but I've taped a little handle onto this thing. And I can get it to fit, you know, pretty tightly up here towards the front. And then back here, it's uh, the corners not lining up very well, but I just need to kind of bend it in place. So ideally, I can tack weld it here towards the front. I'm going to continue on this uh, upper corner here, that seam of the factory panel. And then I'm going to tack this thing in and just start, you know, pushing it into place. just tacked it here at the front for the new piece so that I can um, you know secure it on this end and then fit it here to the back you can see here my whole almost my, my finger can go inside here so I need to shift this bend back just a little bit so I'm gonna go underneath and just muscle it into position but now I know that at least this section won't move so I'm just doing one thing at a time and I'm using whatever welder I think will work the best I mean I've done both TIG weld and MIG weld um, right down here, those are, the, those are the MIG welds, and it's whatever is the easiest at the time. I mean, some of these uh, fillet welds are sometimes easier with the MIG welder because it just adds more material. And if the gap is too large, I always choose the MIG welder over the TIG. So that's what I'm doing, and uh, this should be done soon. I was just underneath, and I was just hammering the bejesus out of this corner, and you can see how it's distorted the, the car just a little bit. So I think I need to trim this. I'll trim it and then straighten it and then start tack welding down here. And just, you know, where it fits good, I weld it. And that's what I do. I just, if it fits good, weld it. Fits good, weld it until it's all done. Okay, time for a status update. This is about maybe 60% welded in. Along these edges, uh, this is pretty easy to weld here because this is much thicker, so it sucks up a lot of the heat. You can see there's more work to do here. It's kind of stitched in places, uh, more TIG welding to do on this thin panel. But along here and on the back, this is really difficult. This metal here is really thin because it's stretched when they form this piece. So you can see some areas that have blown through with the MIG welder. I'm going to have to go back over this with the TIG welder and just go real slow here to try to, try to fix that up. Bam! This is 100% welded in. And I'm not going to lie, this was a lot of work and you know, very time consuming. But I'm happy with the way it came out. This is it's very solid. Right here is the area that I went over with the TIG welder, kind of filled up some of those uh, burn throughs that I made. And then over here, this is messy, but there were some pits here from, you know, water intrusion probably coming in from this, uh, you know, the quarter window or this back window. A little water probably sat underneath here and it did, it did have some heavy pitting here. So I just filled up the pits with my TIG welder. Uh, that's not something that's easy to do, but I, I think it's just a little bit of insurance to keep this area very solid. 
And then this has a little bit of give to it. Not much, it's tight right here. It won't oil can and in here it's kind of relaxed, but because of all the shrinking right here, it just makes it real tight. It's like tight like a drum. If you remember a few videos ago when I cut this out, I cut this out strategically so that it would be easy to weld. That means it's cut along these high areas of curvature and also rounded corners here so this doesn't sink in. It would have been more elegant if I created a flange along this area here with my bead roller and folded it up and then just spot welded it in. That would have resulted in less welding but definitely would have taken more time to form it. And this is a tough area to clamp and, and weld because there's no access to the back, or at least with one person, there's no access to the back. It's difficult to do. So I think this was a, a good choice. This is likely gonna get covered up with some sound deadening material because the transaxle's right underneath this and those high pitched whines, uh, I'm not gonna want inside the cabin. So this is likely gonna get covered up. That's why I just, Boom, welded it all across. This piece here extends past the seat pan. You can see this is where the weld is. That's the weld, and this is all extra sheet metal. Same with this flange here. It extends past the corner of the weld. So this is a big fillet weld here on the inside. So the next step is to come by, probably with some snips first, trim this back, and then just grind it so it's um, a smooth radius. Right here, you can see where the fit was much better. And, and this just needs to be knocked down with a grinder. I was able to finish off this upper edge with the grinder and just kind of radius this corner a little bit. And it looks pretty good from the underside. I was unable to get to this lower flange mostly because this trailing arm is just in the way. This is gonna have to come apart. The trailing arm is gonna have to come out when I do the undercoating anyways. So I'm gonna leave this as is for now. It's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, I'm gonna turn my attention now to the uh, passenger side. And one thing I noticed is that the height of the shelf is even with this little triangle uh, seat belt uh, patch. So I'm going to drill a hole from underneath here so I know where this triangle is on the inside and then I'll create my tape line and cut from the inside. Man, it's a lot of work uh, on those seat buckets. Just difficult access, cramped area for welding. I'm having to prop up the foot pedal against the uh, inner sill here, just to lean back and weld on my side, on the passenger side. So I'm doing the best I can. It is a lot of welding, but I'm trying to keep the craftsmanship up. Okay, here's where I'm at on the inside. Of course, the uh, driver's side is done. And I have a lot of the passenger side done, especially here around the camber box. And then the new sheet metal bracket or part that's just sort of taped in place is ready to be welded in. Look at this mess. It seems like every tool I have was used to make this project uh, happen. I need to clear it out a little bit before I can start welding again. So let me know what you guys think about this project. Uh, it's a pretty substantial one. You know, I feel bad for some of you guys who are dealing with rust in this area. It's tough to get access. It's hard to work both sides. Um, I don't have a lift, so I'm climbing underneath the car and, you know, going back and forth. It's pretty, pretty exhausting to tell you the truth. 
But let me know what you think a shop would charge to put the camera boxes in and uh, do all the modifications to the seat pan. I'm just curious. I have an idea how many hours I spent on it, but uh, you know, every, everyone's results are a little different. So if you have an idea on that, leave a comment below. But I will come back to you next week. Don't forget to uh, subscribe, like the video, share the video. And if you don't mind, check out the Patreon page. Here's all the members right here.